Welcome to your January 3 television news update for June 7, 2016. I am Nicolas Saro for this brief news update. The Science Building in Edinburgh is nearly completion and is scheduled to open for this fall according to the local authorities for the new university. Dr. Harleen Rodriguez, director of the student province for the DTRGV has been awarded the AADD CESA is awarded. The award has been due to his fight for workers' rights and humanities issues, which has been supported throughout his career, and which made by DTRGB art major student Ramiro Leal was dedicated for Freddy Gonzalez and the local Edinburgh HEV. In attendance were located Asrosis and the mom of the late soldier Freddy Gonzalez and his sports. The tennis teams have been open for two campuses. Trains the campus will be held from June 29th to July 31st. The cost will be $40 and the weather outlooks is going to be, looks like sunny, human, and the rest of the week, but expect a small thunderstorms by Friday. This is Nicola Saro with your University TV News Update. Stand by, five, four, three. Hello, I am Nicholas Saro from Rock City and my special guest today is Arturo Van Rosten. And how do you feel about government spying on people? I believe that is wrong, wrong, wrong to do, but at the same time, I understand like, where they're coming from because like since 9-11, they wiretapped the phones to hear our conversations Uh, do you think it's okay that government are spying on people? I don't think it's okay, but I mean, they do it to have uh, to know what what people are doing and uh, to see if you're actually, you're a terrorist or, or not. Uh, what do you think how people will react if they knew that the government was spying their Facebook? I. I believe they would uh, delete their Facebook and, and not have a, 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 any social social account and all that. Uh, do you know that they have a mosquito sign on people and people don't, do not know this? I, I, I feel that some people know that they are spying on them, but they don't do anything or say anything at, at all. Uh, for my last question, uh, do you think, no. do you think about the government spying on people when they're talking on the phone or cell phone? How do they do that? They, I know they do that. They, they, uh, they wiretap the phone, so, like, like after the 9-11, like they, they uh, put something or did something to the phone line so they couldn't like be hearing your conversations and all that. For Brunk TV, I am Nicholas R. Three, two, one. Hey Nick, how are you? Very good, and you? Okay, I'm doing good, work is good. What are, how, what are you doing with work? A lot of projects, a lot of filming. Filming, new movies, commercials. Um, both filming Both, and commercial. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I have nothing to complain Hello? about myself either. Yes, I need those documents at the office by 12. Are you free? Mm -hmm. I need them right now. Mm -hmm. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? You can never get any service around here and no one seems to do their job. Is everything okay, Orly? Can I help you with anything? Do you have the papers I need? No, but I do have a Coca-Cola. It always gets me in a chipper mood. Just take a drink. Are you sure? It's positive. Hmm. Wow, this is refreshing. It's a thirst quencher. With like pet good with Coca Cola. Two friends. Two friends. Mm. 
So, Nick, how's work? Uh, very good. Okay. You're the guy. Do you work too? Do you have any complaints? No, 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 no complaints. New projects? A lot of projects. Yeah. Yeah, we're filming this new movie coming on. What are you doing? Hello. Also the same thing. Yeah. Are you listening to me? I need those documents by 12 at the office. Hello? Hello? I can never get any service around here. No one can seem to do anything right. Are you OK? No. Can we help you with anything? Do you have all the documents I need? No, but I do have a Coca-Cola. It always helps me get up in a chip, chipper mood. Are you sure? I'm sure. I'm positive. Take a drink. Wow. This is so refreshing. It's a thirst quencher. Yeah, like it tastes good with Coca-Cola. Two friends. <laughs> You're supposed to take it to your face. It's really great. Hello, this is Nicholas Haro from University of Chile. And I'm here with a guest star, Idalia, and she's majoring in communication studies. So what made you major in communication studies? Um, my major in communication studies because um, I think it's going to give me the best skills that I need for, to get employed. Uh, what, were you, what, were, what were your best friend describe you as? My best friend would probably describe me as loyal, helpful, you know, just a friend. friend. So give me an example when you felt something and how did you overcome failure? No, well, I felt that a lot of stuff, many things. Um, I think my biggest failure will probably be um, managing time, managing my priorities and all like, But um, I always make decisions without thinking about the future consequences. But everything has taught me, you know, like lessons learned. Like I learn from everything, every failure I, I learn and I just, get stronger, you know, like try to do better than, than what I did before. Okay. Uh, for my last question, what has inspired you? What has inspired me? I think right now my inspiration will be my, my children. Like, you know, as a single parent, I, it's my responsibility to, for them to, you know, have a, a role model, someone that they can look up to and I try to be that person. I, you know, I, they inspire me to do better because to show them, you know, to, to give them a better life than what I have. Okay. So thank you, Ivali, and this thank is Mikul Sario for University TV and Radio. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us here at University TV. My name is Idalia Alaniz. Today we have a special interview with Nicholas. He's a student at UTRGV who is working on obtaining a bachelor's degree on communication. Hi, Nicholas. Hello. Um, why did you select communication studies as your major? Well, I think like today, we need a lot of communications because there's a lot of people that are divorcing because of miscommunications, more in life, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what is the biggest challenge of being a college student? Well, well some people have a, a lot of anxiety, so they don't know that they need to take less classes. For example, one of my friends, I told him to just take two classes and not four classes. Oh. And what do, you, what do you like the most about the campus here? Well, we experience like the teachers. And most, we get to know what organizations and clubs are there. Okay. And if you could change one thing about the campus here, what would it be? Well, to get new furniture and new chairs for the classes. How do you think a friend or teacher that knows you well would say about you? How would oh. they describe you? Yeah, I'm a good person and loyal because in high school, when I graduated, they told me to never change who I really am because I used to help others. And because they say that because when my parents named me, mm -hmm. they named me because of my grandfather's great-grandfather because they he used to, like, if he sees, like, a person without waraches, he does so, he used to give waraches to that person. And what type of employment uh, are you going to be seeking after college? Um, uh, I'm not sure right now because I'm probably going to go out of state or I'm not sure yet. 
Okay. Well, I wanted to thank our guests and everybody here watching. Um, and thank you for always tuning in with us here at University News. I'm Javi Gonzalez, and these are the do's and don'ts for conducting an interview. So let's begin. Do. Always dress in an appropriate manner and always look professional for your interview. Don't dress in a manner that makes you look unprofessional. Like this, exhibit A, inappropriate. And another do, always treat your guests with polite and respectful manner. Thank you for being on the show today. Oh, thank you very much for having me. Don't, don't be rude and inappropriate to your guests. Hey, what's up, how's it going? Oh, cool, are you? Good. <laughs> In a sit down interview, posture can really make or break your interview. During the interview, always sit up straight and always slightly face your interviewee. Don't slouch or sit in an offensive way. Today we're gonna go to San Juan to volunteer to help out a, help out decades for the flight so they won't be deported to where they were born. So make sure you clear your throat and spit your gum out right before the interview. <coughs> These are just a couple tips so you can remember for your next broadcast interview. I'm Jaime Gonzalez. Thank you. Good morning, and welcome to Bronx Summer TV. I'm Jenny Galindo. And I am Priscilla Huaracha. We have a great show for you today. To start us off with world news, here's Oneida Perez. There is some breaking news coming from Egypt. Millions of Egyptians have been taking the streets at Cairo Central Terrace Square for an anti-government protest for the removal of President Mohamed Morsi. During the day, families and children storm the street, chanting and waving flags for all to hear and see. However, once dark rises, it becomes a hostile environment because there has been rape crimes committed. One in particular is a Dutch woman who was abused by multiple men in the middle of a crowd. A statement released by a security official, the Dutch woman was interning with an Egyptian organization and was taking photos of the protest when she was attacked. This is one of eight victims on the same night. The Egyptian prosecutor's office has released a full-on investigation. For Bronx TV, I'm Oneida Perez. Thank you, Oneida. Here's Alondra Velez with our local news. Thank you, Priscilla. There was a head-on collision that took the lives of five people in Los Fresnos Sunday morning. It happened near the intersection of Highway 100 and Track 43 Road. Authorities continue to investigate the scene of the crime and are waiting for toxicology results. 
Speaking of accidents, the Department of Public Safety has declared the 4th of July as one of the deadliest holidays, so you can assure they will be on their toes and look out for intoxicated drivers on the road. So if you plan on drinking this 4th of July, please make sure you have a designated driver. Remember, it's cheaper to pay for a taxi than to pay for yours or someone else's lives. For Bronx TV, I am Alondra Velez. Back to you. In recent athletic news, Bronx Country just got a whole lot bigger as UTPA formally accepted an invitation to join the Western Athletic Conference, otherwise known as the WAC. Just yesterday, UTPA unveiled the all-new WAC banner and logos at the UTPA Fieldhouse. The WAC being the third oldest conference in the NCAA gives UTPA instant credibility as all sports will now have the opportunity to compete for national championships. And in the words of your university president, Dr. Robert Nelson, joining the Western Athletic Conference is a wonderful opportunity for UT Pan American. Our students will finally have a voice in NCAA decisions. So Priscilla, what information do you have for us on financial aid for our Pan Am students? This past Monday, July 1st, CBS News announced that student loan interest rates will increase. Business correspondent for CBS, Ms. Hobson, provides us with information concerning this issue. The interest rate went from a 3.4 to a 6.8. Melody explains Congress had to input this increase since debt is going out of control. She mentions how it will only account for the 7 million people who are getting loans this year, not the ones who already have one. Former UTPA student Ana Zapata says this increase will affect many students, including herself, who are trying to get a higher education and have to rely on loans. She's definitely against this decision. And for more information on UTPA, here's Veronica Vela. Starting in fall 2013, UTPA will be offering their revised degree plans for graduate students. Master of Education and Special Education will have fewer hours needed to complete the degree. There are still a few other degrees that are a part of this revision. If you would like further information, please contact the Office of Graduate Studies at 956-665-3661. Again, that number is 956-665-3661. Are you calling from the White House or White House? Was the question Dr. Karen Lozano, Professor of Mechanical Engineering here at UTB asked when she received a phone call from the member of the White House. They asked if she would fly to Washington, D.C. to take part in a discussion with President Obama about immigration reform. They all shared the same belief that hard work is the only way to succeed. What an honor having to take part in such a surreal experience. I'm Veronica Bell reporting for Bronx TV. We'll be right back after this short break. UTPA Bookstores is having what's called the best price promise, where if you bring the price of any book on Amazon or Check.com, they will match it. Just make sure it's Amazon's, pri it's Amazon's price and not another student. How about showing some school spirit with some cool UTPA t-shirts? <gasps> Don't forget, with the purchase of two UTPA t-shirts, you get one free. Yes, you heard right, a free t-shirt. And where? Only at your UTP bookstore. So for all your school supply needs and school spirit needs, don't forget to stop by the UTP bookstore located inside the library with up to 75% clearance every day. 75%? 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 75%. 
CPR and first aid trainings are being offered on July 20th and August 16th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. The cost is to be announced. Zumba is not just a workout, it's a party. If you love to Zumba, then you'll love this. The Wellness and Recreational Sports Complex are now offering a three-hour event of non-stop Zumba on July 3rd and August 8th from 5.30 to 8 p.m. For more information about these classes and events that are being offered at the Wellness and Recreational Sports Complex, or if you would like to get more information about other classes or events, please contact the WRAC at 956-665 7508. Again, that number is 956-665-7508. For Bronx TV, I'm Veronica Vela. Have some free time on your hands? Nick Hato will fill us in with more activities coming to you here on campus. Hello, my name is Nick Haro, and today I'm going to talk to you about the arts and humanities. And there's going to be a theater production of the summer, and it's, uh, it's called Over the River and Through the Woods. And it's a comedy and hilarious and heartwarming family. The story takes place in New Jersey, and it unfolds the grandparents to not let the son, grandson go away. By Joe, it will be on June 3rd to the 6th at 7:30, and the 7th on the 7th at 2 o'clock. It will be at the Pan Am Night Albert Jefferson at the theater. Uh, staff, faculty, and students will be free. Uh, for Bronx TV, I'm Nick Cara. And now we have a surprise for you about a new app available for UTPA students and staff. We have Irene Mercado with some great info for us today. Do you know what's app around campus? It's no lie that phone apps are becoming what seems to be a new daily essential. The University Police Department has noticed this trend, and in hopes of increasing communication with the public, they have released their own application that connects its users directly to its emergency assistance via their smartphone. Its features include checking latest UTPA PD news, Twitter updates, and Facebook posts. It can also be used for sharing feedback and questions, finding directions to the department, and much more. We have made campaigns out where we've done information tables, we've, we've passed out um, the cards. these business cards uh, that advertise the app and have the QR code on it. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be planning on a, uh, another advertising campaign for this uh, coming out in the fall. So we asked students around campus if they knew and how they felt about it. I mean, anything helps. If you're giving out information, the more resources, the more availability and methods of giving that information to the public, it always facilitates communication. So I've downloaded the app myself, but I've never used it. So I guess people that use the apps more frequently uh, would have a better interaction with the police department. As long as it keeps getting updated, because I do see sometimes some websites, they just don't keep getting updated. And if we're lacking the, you know, the ability to keep, keep it informed with new innovations on our campus, then what's the point of the app? This app can be downloaded through the iPhone App Store and the Android Market by searching for MyPD. And now you know WhatsApp. Make sure to stay safe and updated by downloading the MyPD app today. For Bronx TV, this is Irene Ricardo. Thank you for watching Bronx Summer TV. We will see you again August 26th. Until then, have a great vacation. I am Priscilla Huaracha. And I'm Jenny Galindo.
Hello, my name is Nicholas Haro, and I'm 29 years old. I'm from Gilroy, California, and I was born with cerebral, cerebral palsy. Uh, one thing my uncle told me, can look at the banner to ask for help. Uh, I like to be uh, in the office of the alumni, alumni relationships because I'm the president for the Surrey Alumni Association. Also, I'm in the Intro of Communication, I'm a member. So I like to be here in school and I like to be interactive. Well, actually they don't because they're very old tradition. That's where my uncle's <laughs> aunt's coming because when I went to that point, uh, they helped me get a job in Best Buy and I was out of that's correct. here in the new UT Rio Grande Valley as a teacher teaching communications classes. But first I need to get my master's as a graduate teaching assistant and then teaching. We had the opportunity of interviewing some great and supportive friends of Nick and here's what they had to say. I met Nick at a volunteering event that selects people who want to volunteer as much as learn from each other. And I think Nick really embodies that. He has this desire to help others despite his disability. He actually uses it to boost him up, boost his spirits, and I think we could all learn from that. It was there in the group that we came up with the nickname Nice Nick because through the four days, we got to see how much he wants to help people and how much he encourages us to do the best that we can to reach our potential. Hi, 
I'm Trisha Milano, and um, a few words on Nick is um, I actually met him through the Alternative Spring Break program. And um, something uh, about him that's really interesting is that he's probably one of the nicest people you'll ever meet in campus. And so, um, a lot of things I really like about Nick is really understanding, and he's very um, um, inclusive. That means that he will invite you to any other organization that he's part of, uh, such as the Student Alumni Organization. Only used the disability disability service only for extended test time, and I also go there to take my test. But if I only want. To. Hi, Nick. Um, you're one of the bravest, strongest people I ever met. You're awesome. You're a great guy. You really care about your GPA. And you have one of the biggest school spirits and. I'm so glad I got to meet you through SGA and then we formed a friendship. When I started living in the valley, I went to Syracuse, uh, practicing, practicing my speech. And with the same therapist, she also became my speech therapist in school because my first language was Spanish. So I remember like, uh, working on my R's, R and this. And then she taught me how to tie my shoe as one hand. And then what I also noticed that I started to become a fast walker. And then Yeah. Okay, we we'll make stuff right there. Ah. <laughs>
Valley News 1 today is June 30th, 2016. I am Daniela Rodriguez. And I am Jesus Esparza. In today's news, we have the Supreme Court decision regarding on abortion. Immigrants are requesting DACA for any illegal children in the United States. And in Valley News today, we have McAllen celebrating their second Pride Week parade. We also have some great Valley alerts to keep you safe. In sports, the UTRGV women's tennis team is on the top of their game. More entertainment. We will be looking at that beautiful valley weather all coming up. And our top story for this edition is the Supreme Court has reaffirmed the constitutional protection rights for abortion, striking out parts of a restrictive Texas law. Our Cynthia Trevino has more from Edinburgh. The Supreme Court came to an agreement to strengthen constitutional protections for abortion rights against a restrictive Texas law that could have drastically reduced the number of abortion clinics in the state, leaving them only in the largest metropolitan areas. The restrictive Texas law required all clinics in the state to meet the standards for ambulatory surgical centers, including regulations concerning buildings, equipment, and staffing. It also required doctors who perform abortions to have admitting privileges at nearby hospitals. Justice Stephen G. Breyer wrote for the majority saying, we conclude that neither of these provisions offers medical benefits sufficient to justify the burdens upon access that each imposes. Each places a substantial obstacle in the path of women seeking a pre-viability abortion. Each constitutes a burden on abortion access and each violates the federal constitution. In a message posted on Twitter, President Obama said he was pleased to see the Supreme Court reaffirm that every woman has a constitutional right to make her own reproductive choices. The Supreme Court's decision rippled through the presidential campaign with Democrats and Republicans looking to rally voters, reminding them that the future of the court is at stake. For Valley First News, I am Cynthia Trevino, back to the studio. So as you may know, last week was Pride Week, and McCown celebrated their second annual Pride Week parade. The community all gathered to celebrate human diversity and marriage equality. Eduardo Salinas has more on the story. June is Pride Month. Communities across the nation join together to celebrate. Also, on the 26th was the first anniversary of the United States Supreme Court decision on marriage equality. Pride Month is basically the month of June, and we celebrate in the LGBT community, or LGBT plus community, about how the celebration, how we overcome the oppression that has been faced against us throughout the entire history of our existence. Um, it's very important to the LGBT community to remember that we have come such a long way from from being thrown in jail or considered mentally ill just for being homosexual or transgender or any other sexuality and identifying with a different gender than one that they assigned you at birth. So it's to celebrate that like, you know, we are here, we're not just some hypersexualized community or an invisible community as well. Like we're not just as, we're just not gonna like allow that to happen to us and erase our own identities. That's it for today's report. I am Eduardo Salinas, back to you in the studio. Last week, the Supreme Court failed to approve an extension on DACA, affecting thousands of students, especially here in UTRGV. Our Nicolas Saro has more. Hello, I am Nicolas Saro. I am interviewing Abraham. I am interviewing him on how students are affected by the DACA decision. Well, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, DACA, was introduced in 2012 by President Obama. This program gave students who are attending, attended college or university or a secondary high school. What this programs do for students is they get the deferred deportation, which means that they no longer have to worry about being deported while traveling to school like myself or going to work and it gives us an authorization for work a social security number a driver's license and identification within the u.s and it also clears us by the department of homeland security which gives us the authorization to be able to legally work in the usa and not be in the shadows this program would benefit hundreds of thousands of people across the valley thank you abraham for sharing on what's going on for valley first news i am nicholas Harrow. And we have Adriana on the story for Daily Valley News alerts. Thank you, Daniel, for the Valley's alert today. Watch us for the scammer who are calling Valley's residents. 
Dolores, a 85-year-old resident from Brownsville, received a phone call from a known person who claimed he was a family member from Mexico. As the conversation kept on going, he never mentioned his name. The daughter of Dolores spoke to the scammer and spotted something wrong when he asked for an address to pay them a visit. The scammer mentioned to her that he was pumping gas, then quickly changed the shirt to being on the road. Once she detected that line, Dolores' daughters mentioned that the phone was being tapped and recorded by Brownsville police. Dolores' daughter called the police right away. Officer Janie told her that they have been receiving many calls regarding the scam. The officer advised everyone not to give out names, personal information, bank account information as well. Now we have Julian on location talking about this very topic. Thank you, Adriana. I'm here out on the streets asking people about their experiences on being scammed. So there's been cases of scamming going around. Have you ever been scammed yourself? And if so, how was that experience? Uh, yes, I have a couple of times. Um, and it's like, I obviously don't believe it because it's like too good to be through it. Uh, I was scammed out of a fantasy scamming, football pick. But my brother did get scammed with a car insurance company. Oh, but, uh, one of my friends did get scammed. Uh, she shared her information through the phone and her identity has been uh, stolen. What, what advice can you give people who have been scammed so they, to help prevent them being scammed? I guess take more precaution and ask more questions towards what they're going to be scammed in. Based on the experience with my brother, I recommend to people to make sure that the programs or insurance that you're applying with or anything in general is legit. And Double check your information. From fashion to music. From literature to paintings. From architecture to performances. Art is all around us. For more information, visit AmericanForTheArts.org. For sports today, the women's UTRGV tennis team just won the women's WAC championship. Jaime Gonzalez has more on the story. And thank you, Danielle. To start off this sports segment, I would like to congratulate the UTRGV women's tennis team on winning their first ever WAC championship and NCAA berth. The Lady Vaqueros will be headed to California where they will play the well, they will be facing top seed of Cal Berkeley in the NCAA first round of the tournament. Also, more sports news from UTRGV. It looks like there's a new man on campus and a new head men's basketball coach, and his name is Lou Hill. Coach Hill comes to UTRGV after spending four seasons at Oklahoma as an assistant under former UTPA coach, Law Cougar. So it looks like great things are happening at UTRGV with even more to come. This concludes Valley First News at One sports segment. Back to the studio, Jesse. And now for our entertainment news, we have our very own Brenda Garza. So how was your 4th of July weekend? In case you missed it, here's a recap. The Spasmatics were at Clayton's Bar and Grill on South Padre Island. DJ Steve Aoki headlined Life in Color at State Farm Arena. Aaron Watson sang the night away at Harlingen's Freedom Fest. And Tropical Panama was at Rancho Western Club in Brownsville. In case you missed out on all the festivities, make sure not to miss out on this. From the owners of Thirsty Monkey and Suerte Bar and Grill comes their third location, adequately called Tres. The owners say that having a unique theme has made their businesses succeed. While Thirsty Monkey stays true to its rock and metal crowd, Suerte Bar and Grill gets everyone in their doors with creative wall-to-wall -wall South Texas Mexican culture decor. And Tres will not fall far from the tree. It will open its doors in late July, early August in downtown McAllen with the 90s classic Die Vibe. That's all for today's entertainment news. Back to you in the studio. It's starting to feel like a scorcher. We have Idalia Alanish showing us our valley forecast for the week. It's going to be another hot day today in the Rio Grande Valley. From Mission to Brownsville, we can see temperatures ranging in the high 80s to mid 90s. For South Padre Island, we're going to be feeling hot, humid temperatures for the next couple of days. Today will be mostly sunny with a high 91 and a low of 84. For tomorrow, Thursday, it will be partly sunny with a few showers. The temperatures will range from 92 to 84 to a low of 84. For the coming week, we can expect temperatures to drop a bit to the high 80s and remaining like that till the end of the month. Now let's take a look at the weather radar. There's very few, very few rain activity in the South Padre Island area. There's a chance of thunderstorm for early Monday morning, July 11th. However, most of the rain is in the Corpus Christi area heading to New Orleans. The chances of rain for us here will be minimal, but we will get that extra humidity added to our hot temperatures. Here's how the weather is gonna be for the weekend. 
Today we'll be at 92 with a low of 80, for Saturday 87 with a low of 84, and for Sunday 88 with a low of 79. Friday we can expect sunshine on Saturday, variable clouds with a very low chance of rain, and for Sunday a lot of sunshine. This is great weather for those of you planning to travel to the island. Now I'm going to leave you with Julianne who has the latest and greatest news of what's happening out on the streets. Everyone and I'm here at the university just to see how smart students really are. So there are six apples. You take away four, how many do you have? Two. Two. There are six apples and I take away four. Well, that I have four apples then. Okay, okay. Ones have 31 days, others have 30. How many months have 28 days? Say that again. Uh, one. Two? Some months have 31 days, others have 30 days. How many months have 28 days? Uh, one. The house is on the left, mm -hmm. the blue house is on the right. Mm -hmm. Where is the white house? Wait, if the, wait, can you repeat that? In D.C. Okay. And this concludes this week's edition of Valley First News. I am Jesus Esparza. And I am Danielle Rodriguez. Make sure you get follow Valley One News on Twitter and Facebook. We'll see you guys next week. Hello everybody, it is time for Second Date Update, which is when you meet somebody, you go on a date, you have what you think is a good time, and you think, they will definitely call me back. But what happens is that they don't. So, you call us and you figure out what went wrong. Today we have Emma with us. So, Emma, tell us. You said everything was going fine and now he won't call you back. Yes, exactly. I thought everything was going fine, but now I don't understand why he won't call me back. Well, tell us how you met and how the date went down. Okay, so I was clicking through Tinder and I saw this very handsome looking guy who attracted me, so I messaged him. We set up a, day that, a date the very next day, and he was very punctual, such a gentleman. He even honked when he got there. We rolled down the windows as we drove, listening to the ongoing traffic. We got to the restaurant, and we looked through the menu. We had the most romantic and delicious dinner ever. I even told him a joke, and he laughed. We drove back home, he dropped me off, and everything seems fine. Now it's been four days, and he hasn't called me or texted me. I don't understand. Okay, so let's go ahead and give him a call. Um, what was his name again? Uh, his name's Joe, and yes, yes, please call him. Okay, now stay on the line and stay quiet. It's ringing. Um, hi, is Joe there, please? Hello? Hi, this is Bridget from 95.6. Can I put you on the air for a little bit? Sure. Okay, so Joe, listen. Uh, so you went on a date with a girl that we are friends with, and uh, she kind of told us about how it went, and we kind of laughed, you know, because we want to know a little bit more about what happened. Our friend's name is Emma. Do you remember her? Oh, yeah, I remember her. She was crazy. Never again. <laughs> wow, never again. I mean, you see, we wonder what exactly happened, because she told us that she had such a wonderful time with you. So walk me through. Tell me exactly what happened. Why eat never again? Yeah, I mean, she told me to be there at, for her at 7 p.m. And I got to her house and waited for her like 30 minutes after a while. I had to hunk her uh, to come out. And while we were driving to her choice of restaurant, she had really bad road rage. At one point, she was honking at the horn of my car from the passenger seat. She would yell at the drivers and freaked out me. When we got to the place she picked out, it was a taco truck next to the construction site. She kept telling me and everyone at the taco truck stand a really bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the jokes and that part of the date was already, I mean, she's so social and that's good. But when we finished eating, this girl started crying, saying that she had never felt such a deep connection, <laughs> crying. At this point, I wanted to go home. So I walked her to the vehicle. I drove her home 
when I finally got her off my car, I told her that I don't think it was going to go well. And she smiled and said, okay, I tried to let her down easy. Okay, I see. So basically, you tried to... No, you told me that you loved me and then you would call me back. No, no, no. I never said that. Okay, well, this is Bridget from 95.6. Please stick around for part two.